Hi, this is Linnea Nelson. I'm the Executive Director of UU Wellspring. I've met many of you and I look forward to meeting the new facilitators at our facilitator chats throughout the year. But for now, I'd like to share with you just some kind of basic information about how to be a facilitator. You've been chosen or invited or decided to become a facilitator knowing that you would be able to create a sacred space for other people to explore their own spiritual lives in a, a beautiful group of souls who are together in your congregation. So let's begin um, by just uh, making sure you know who I am and that you can reach me. I'll be giving out my email. You probably already have it, but you can always ask me questions. I'm happy to answer. So your primary role as a facilitator is to hold sacred space, to prepare just as your participants do with an open heart and to communicate in a timely manner with participants so they know what's coming up. You will be thinking about this question in the back of your mind throughout the program. What will you do with this one wild and precious life? This is the poet Mary Oliver, the line from her poem that really started uh, thinking around you, you wellspring 20 years ago. Here is our current board of directors for UU Wellspring. Carolyn Bierke is our board chair. She is a music director and seminarian. Uh, we also have lay folks, community ministers, parish ministers, retired ministers, spiritual directors, directors of religious education. One of the reasons we have such a broad, diverse group of people is that they have different experiences and it makes our time together very rich in bringing uh, new ideas forward in UU Wellspring and being able to provide you the best uh, programming possible. So since this is the facilitator information session, I wanna show you on the website, there's a facilitator login at the top. This is where all the materials are. You're going to find it here, but this is not a place where participants need to go. This is only where you will go. Please don't share the password with your participants. Uh, it is very tempting for participants to read several sessions ahead. And we find that it's really helpful if everybody stays focused in the place that we're at together. We also ask that you don't download, that you have some kind of device that you can bring into your session, whether you're in person or you are, are online. I have a tendency to use my phone uh, for this session because I find that I can have, if I'm online, I can see the whole screen in front of me. And I find that in the um, uh, when we have the opportunity to um, be in person, it doesn't really block me from the rest of the group, but certainly some kind of tablet or a laptop, any of those will work fine. So you'll go to this facilitator login um, but you'll go to sources if you are a sources um, facilitator, or you'll choose another one. If you're a UU Wellspring Reads facilitator, you'll see UU Wellspring Reads, and then you'll have to uh, click on that, and that will give you the choice of uh, one of our three UU Wellspring Reads programs. Now, when you get to this page after you've clicked on the program, there's this yellow bar and it looks like there's a password already in it. There is not. It is just part of the program. We haven't been able to get rid of it. So just type over those little dots, the password. And if you're saying, oh, I don't have a password, um, there is a link. It should have been sent to you by your uh, coordinator for your congregation, or you can find it at the end of every one of my emails. And I'm just director at uuwellspring.org. You can see it above me. And that facilitator registration um, that you need to fill out will then automatically send you the password. So then you'll hit the submit button. And once there, I'm gonna be showing sources because so many people who, when it's your first time facilitating, it's often sources. But if you were doing deep questions or article two or whatever, you'd have a picture and you would have the word on it. So you'd know you're in the right place. The sources program starts with a facilitator guide. Most of them have a facilitator guide. Some of them just jump right in. Then there's the email to send before the retreat. And there's the actual retreat. 
So you can take a look at these. Um, we have a two and a half hour retreat for sources and we have a four hour retreat. We recommend the two and a half hour retreat and the email that goes with that if you're doing it online. If you're doing it in person and you can have everyone attend for the full four hours, you're welcome to do it that way. So the retreat is required for all of your participants and you as facilitator or co-facilitators. And I'm sure you're thinking, oh, but we have this one person who can't come to the retreat, but they're, they're, they're gonna be fine. They might be fine, but the rest of the group is going to gel during this retreat. It's really an exciting first step. So if you have someone who can't attend, I would invite them to wait to the next year. And that sounds really hard, but it also means that everyone who's in the retreat and shares everything from what they're excited about and learns about spiritual uh, direction and they learn about spiritual practices and share their trepidations, they will all be doing that together. And I will tell you that over and over again, when people say, oh, we did try to have somebody miss the retreat. And it really, it you could tell that, that our group just really had a hard time. Getting. When you open up a sources session, you'll see that this is the email for the retreat. There will be an email. You need to read through that because sometimes there are places for you to input information, the date, the time, the Zoom or the room number. And then I also, when I open up this email, here's my little tip of the day. If I'm about to, to facilitate session three, before session three, I open up session four, I cut and paste the email, I get it ready in an email that I'm ready to send out so that right after session three, I can take any tidbits that came up. Maybe somebody's going to be the person who leads the spiritual practice. And so maybe you want to put that into the email. Maybe somebody shared a book or a poem that they want everyone to have. And so then you can share that with the group in that email. And I like to send that email out right after the session. And the reason for that is that some people do review it right away. They're very excited about seeing it. If you wait a couple of days, then sometimes people forget it and then they, they miss it until a few days before the session. So if they know they're always gonna get it right after the last session, then that can be very helpful. Another tip is I always put the date of the next session in the subject line. So I try to keep it the same so people can find it. So I might have UUW to stand for UU Wellspring. And then I'll put the date and I either I'll put September 12th or I'll put 9, 12, 23, but do it the same way every time so that when people are looking for it, it is much easier for them to find it. So there's also a place for you to sign, but really read through it. You can tweak this a little bit. There might be things you need to tell your group in particular. And so uh, don't just send it out. You need to read through it and add your part. Now we've talked a little bit about the retreat and if you've already taken UU Wellspring, you may remember it, but you may have had a different uh, format than what you're planning to do. So once again, sources is two and a half hours online or four hours in person. First uh, retreat for your congregation, if you're brand new to UU Wellspring, you hire UU Wellspring to come in and do the retreat. And we do that online, whether you're meeting in person or not. And if you have someone in your group who has taken UU Wellspring and you think that they're a great facilitator, feel free. And in fact, most congregations after the first year, they do their own retreats. We also have a few congregations who invite us back year after year because they want someone from the outside to be doing the retreat. The Deep Questions has a two and a half hour retreat. So just add a half an hour to that first session. Uh, same thing with spiritual practices it has a four hour retreat. I think you can look through that and decide if you want to shorten it down to two and a half hours. That is up to you. Um, but right now we wrote that one as a four hour retreat. And it gives you a little more spaciousness. Faithful actions is just two hours. Maybe you want to do two and a half hours, especially if you're combining groups. So so say you had two groups of sources and they're going to come together for faithful actions. Then maybe you want to have a little extra time just so that people have a little spaciousness in getting to know one another. Sacred Arts has two options. You can either do a two-hour one or a four-hour one. 
UU Wellspring Reads, which is one of our six session programs, the youth or young adults, um, 18 to 25 usually, or Article 2, are all um, just done in their first session. We have journals for two of the programs. Uh, since we started UU Wellspring with the two and a half hour retreat, which started last year, we have supplemented that time with, with videos because we feel like the information is very important for you, but the videos then have reflection questions. And so in order to keep track of all that, we find people uh, were requesting a journal. So we created one, you can get it on Amazon. There are links to it on our website. Then uh, we have the proposed article two, which um, we're anticipating that it will pass at the uh, GA in June because then we will have a year to study it. And so this is also a journal that individuals can purchase to uh, be part of a program. So um, both optional, but we had a request for them, so we created them. Now we have a video um, by Julica Herman de la Fuente, and I'd like to play it because I think it's very important that we all hear some more about covenant, even though the covenant has been moved to the first session in sources, we no longer try to cram it into that first day. I wanna make sure you've heard this. Hello friends, my name is Julica Herman de la Fuente and this short video is about covenanting. Thank you so much for agreeing to facilitate the Wellspring programs. I hope that it is as powerful for you as it has been for me. And I want to give the, us an opportunity to think a little bit more about what role does the covenant play in creating the container that's going to give you the richest and deepest conversations possible in your groups. Usually when Unitarian Universalists get together to covenant, there's a couple of things that are fairly common. One, someone shows up with a list of agreements, everyone looks it over, they read it out loud, maybe they take turns reading each bullet point, everyone says, fine, good, let's go. Two, we assume that the people in the room are all the same. And usually what that means is we assume that all the people in the room are white. So when we say, I'm going to take risks, that is a covenant that helps white people push themselves. But I have heard colleagues of color say, I take risks every day. I need to pull back and take a rest. That's the covenant that I'm making with myself. Similarly, when we say we assume good intentions, it means that we don't want to take responsibility for how our comments or our behaviors land in the group, because if I don't mean anything by it, then it shouldn't have any impact. And that's not true, of course. There is a gap between intention and impact sometimes. And so an effective covenant will challenge us to attend to the impact of our communication rather than just the intention. I think also it's important to separate safety from comfort. Yes, it is important to create a fundamental container of safety. And by that, we mean a, co a container where you can trust that other people will honor and respect your experience, will treat you with kindness, will ho hold your experience confidential. All of those things are important. But when we when we say, therefore, I always need to be comfortable, I always need to feel cozy, then we are not creating enough space for us to challenge ourselves and to do the deep spiritual work that these programs are really preparing us to do. So as we look more deeply into what does that mean to feel safe versus comfortable, and when we focus on safety and separate it from comfort, we are able to be more authentic, take more risks and go deeper together. And that is a powerful experience because ultimately that's what we're trying to do is to create a space where folks can say how it truly is with their heart, with their souls. And that's where the growth happens, right? So I encourage you to help your participants play with discomfort and curiosity. I encourage you to build bold spaces rather than focusing just on comfort or safety. And I hope that you find that sweet spot of learning that is somewhere in between 
total conflict avoidance, everything is safe, I'm not really going to say what I mean, and pushing people so far that no one can participate because it just doesn't feel risk, it just doesn't feel safe enough to be that risky. So may you find that sweet space of learning and may your covenant support you in that process. Blessings on your groups and your facilitation and thank you again. I have a few more tips for facilitators. I might have already said some of them, but review one session ahead. Not only have the email up and uh, copied for your next email that you'll send right after your session, but I like to read through it because sometimes there are some unique things coming up. So at the end of your session, you might want to say, oh, next session, we're going to start sharing uh, spiritual practices, or maybe it's, uh, I want to remind you, it's going to be in the email, but it's time to buy the next book or to uh, get the next book from the library or friend or something. You might wanna stay organized with the journal. I find as a facilitator, that's very helpful to me. There's a place for the calendar and there is a place for you to keep track of everyone's uh, contact information and that can be very helpful. Uh, I said sending the email right after the session. In the spring, you'll wanna start identifying people who might be um, interested in being facilitators and people that you think would be great at it. and then start talking with your group about what they'd like to do the next year. I just talked to a minister who said one of the hardest things he took uh, Wellspring quite some time ago, 10 years ago, he said, there wasn't a second year. I was so disappointed. And so now, as you know, we have multiple programs. And so you want to start thinking about it in the spring. If you have um, several years of UU Wellspring, you probably want to, even a couple of years, you want to put together a little group to talk about what's going to be next. Maybe it's the facilitators for the last couple of years. What would be the right next program? Maybe you have a religious um, educator or minister who's involved and talk about it together because you have choices. You can offer the, the advanced programs in any order once you've taken sources. And so uh, talk about it together and get some information from your group. Also, you can attend the quarterly facilitator chats. You'll get um, information on that via email. They'll also be on the website and such. And then you'll want to stay up to date with UU Wellsprings. So if there's something new that comes up, you might want to share it with your group. You can go to our website. Uh, there's a newsletter, um, which if you haven't signed up for that yet, go to our website and you can sign up there at the very bottom. Um, we have a Facebook page where oftentimes, I must say, that is oftentimes just information. We have an Instagram page, too, that uh, we started this year, and I think that has uh, had a lot of interest in um, just kind of more quotes and as well as information, but it's a great place to be on if you are an Instagram user. I also want to point out that you will see some colored uh, blocks in the facilitator notes. We try to put the facilitator notes in a gray so that when you see that, you know, oh, that's a note for me as a facilitator. The green block will be something you would say directly to your participants. And the orange blocks are if you're doing it online, especially during the retreat, you, there is an option for using the retreat video um, and doing the whole thing online. Um, I think it's better if you are able to um, be the facilitator leading the retreat or having someone from UU Wellspring do it, um, but much of it is on video. So anything that is specific to people just meeting online and not in person will be in those orange box, but you know, Wellspring works in either place. And so even if you're doing multi uh, platforms, so it's just a few little tips. Make sure you leave enough time for this. You need about 15 minutes. If you need to shorten up something else and carry it over to the first session, you can, because it's important to have this at the end of your first retreat. And this is where you've asked people to bring in stones, or if you're doing it in person, maybe you've provided stones and markers. Um, paint takes a little too long, but they can certainly go home and paint them. But they're going to be doing um, this using a metaphor of a trip or a journey and writing on their rocks. And you just want time for that to happen in your group. Also, you'll notice as a facilitator at the very bottom of every single session and every program, there's a submit a comment. Please put in comments about the program here. Maybe you stumbled across a great reading that fits really well in here. 
Um, we have multiple years. We are always adding new things. There's some oldies, but goldies, but uh, uh, we do try to keep as relevant as possible. And this is where we sometimes get some of those ideas. Also, if you have a question about a session or you have a challenge, you're welcome to put them in here. It does not show up on the website. It only goes to me. If it's something I feel I need to bring to our board, I will do so. Often I can just email you back and we will work through it. Or oftentimes it's, you know, did you know there's a typo here or something? And, and that's just so helpful. So um, please use that as a way to communicate with me. If you chose to send an email separately, then I have to go find which session it's in. And sometimes that's not clear. If you put it here, it's attached to the session and it makes it easier for me. So I appreciate it when you put the comments here. So there's also a programs page it has for congregations and individuals. So if you are in a congregation, you might want to look that over. Resources page, if you look under resources and tools for facilitators, you're going to find uh, videos. You can copy those videos, share them, put them in your newsletters, uh, use them however it's going to be helpful to you and know that, you know, whatever you can say to inspire people, it's less about the nuts and bolts of um, when you're, you know, encouraging people to join your group where it's two hours and it's twice a month and you need a spiritual director and a spiritual practice that can kind of weigh people down. But if you talk about how it has inspired you and transformed you and helped you know yourself as a UU, that that can often be very inspiring to folks. So here are from the programs pages, the sources and principles. Um, if you go online and you look at each of our programs, there's going to be some videos. There's going to be comments. And I think this is a good place to bring up, oh, sources and principles um, are these, if, if Article 2 does pass at the 2024 General Assembly, this year we're just voting on whether we're going to study it for a year. So sources and principles aren't going anywhere yet. However, if it's passed in 2024, then um, we bring many of our first year parts of the program into something that would um, mirror the Article II um, values and covenants. But for now, we do have a four week study program that gets into the spiritual look at um, Article II, uh, the proposed Article II. And so we hope you will take advantage of that during the year. It's only four sessions long no prerequisites, you don't have to be in sources, but it will follow kind of the same sort of uh, check-in and um, spiritual delving into the materials. Spiritual direction often becomes um, a big part of the retreat and is challenging for folks. Uh, they will have a video as part of their two and a half hour retreat. And I think all of that helps. If you have um, had a, an experience with the, with the spiritual director, we encourage you to share that story with your group. And if others have had spiritual directors, it's very helpful for people to hear that, oh, it can be a little different depending on the person. And of course, in the email, we share the UU Spiritual Directors Network and the International Spiritual Directors um, organization so that they can find spiritual directors. We also have opportunities for them to uh, create a, a friendship with a spiritual friend and we give some resources for their spiritual friend. And that all goes out in an email to them so that if they choose not to have a certified spiritual director, they might have a friend and there are ways um, that they can understand how that's going to work. We will lead the retreat if this is new for you. We have quarterly facilitator chats. The summer one is this training. Uh, we provide new facilitator support. Just email me, talk to me. I will help you out. Um, also, there may be facilitators in your congregation who've done this before. It'd be great to go have go have a cup of tea with them. Um, you might, you know, feel more comfortable when you walk into your when when you begin your first session. Um, it is an easy to access curriculum. It's all online. We're trying to keep it as up to date as possible. Um, the pre-written emails with all the links and homework are all laid out. So as a facilitator, the part that is really different for you is before the session, you get that email ready and send out, but otherwise you're participating in the pre-work in the same way that every participant is. And then um, during the session, of course, you will help to hold the space, but the covenant requires that everyone hold space. 
And there's my email, director at uuwellspring.org. I hope to hear from you. So if you're not doing the first year program or you're thinking about it for next year, um, after sources, you can do any of these year long programs. They're $200 each. One is on principles, one on justice making, deepening our spiritual practice, creativity, and the UU influences we've had in our lives. Do them in any order. And uh, right now we just have these couple of journals, but um, let us know if you think they're really helpful and you're gonna do another program the next year, let me know, I can, I can pull one together. Um, UU Wellspring Reads is our six session program. Some people do the year long program and on top of that do a, a six session program. Sometimes people use the six session program to get people interested in UU Wellspring um, to just try it out for only three months instead of a full uh, church year. Sacred Earth is based on Braiding Sweetgrass, the book by Robin Wall Kimmerer that so many people love. Uh, Creating Meaning does not have a book. It's very hands-on. Crises of Life, based on the book Take What You Need and Book of Delights. And then we have a youth and young adult program. Sources and Spiritual Practices is a little bit longer. It's eight sessions long. Creating Meaning is actually the same one from UU Wellspring Reads. You can look at the sample session online to see how that. And then the proposed article too. We've had people doing it all spring, congregations and individual online programs. We have programs starting this summer online, and then uh, you can bring it to your congregation. You can have as many cohorts as you like um, until we vote on it again in, in June of 2024. So I love this quote by one of the participants in one of my first groups, um, UU Wellspring is a jewel of Unitarian Universalism. And so if you are a participant who's turning into a facilitator, congratulations. I think it's amazing how each time you facilitate a program, even if you've taken it before, you've facilitated it before, um, it just gets deeper and deeper. There are new things. There's so much information and so many opportunities to hear from other people that um, the experience is new every time. So congratulations. Thank you for taking on this role. And please let me know if there's anything else that I can do to be helpful.